शुक्रिया माननीय अध्यक्ष महोदय मैं अपनी आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ मैं अपनी आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ अध्यक्ष महोदय जो निर्णय किया कि हमें बचने के लिए शुद्ध हवा की जरूरत है और ये महत्व महसूस करते हुए उन्होंने इस बात पर आज समय निश्चित किया इसीलिए आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ माननीय सांसद उनको ये पसंद नहीं इसलिए मैं उतर रही हूँ आर वी चौकिंग सर आर वी चौकिंग इज डेली चौकिंग आउट ऑफ द टेन मोस्ट पोल्यूटेड सिटीज इन द वर्ल्ड नाइन आर इन इंडिया एंड इट वॉज क्वाइट अनर्विंग आई हैव द रिकॉर्ड शेयर इट 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 वॉज क्वाइट अनर्विंग वेन अ फॉरन प्रीमियर आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू नेम हर हियर वेन अ फॉरन प्रीमियर ऑन हर विजिट टू आवर नेशन आवर इंडिया अबाउट विच वी आर सो प्राउड शी मेन एन एडवर्स कॉमेंट सो आई वुड like to draw the attention of the government honorable minister is here it is laudable that we have the swachh bharat mission can we launch a swachh hawa mission shall we give it a thought and another point to honorable member kapil patil ji you know when i was studying medicine in mbbs course the teachers would always tell us read the question properly before writing the answer honorable member didn't read the question the question was not on the failures and success of the delhi government it was on pollution and climate change i mean he should read the question before answering his name is parvesh verma the honorable member it was written kapil that's why it was written there maybe maybe it was written there wrongly okay you know when we are fighting to breathe shouldn't we ensure right to breathe clean air in india it is our human right to breathe clean air we are actually standing in the face staring in the face of natural calamity it's a very serious calamity because a rich man feeling hot may put on the ac a rich man feeling very cold may change the daikan ac to a set it in a hotter temperature but when you are breathing whether you are rich or poor you are going out on the road you are breathing the same air whether the air is on delhi or whether the air is on the indo gangetic plain which houses most number of indians 40% of the population that is 55 crore people live in the indo gangetic plain of india and due to that topography and the geography of this place there is a air locking area this area and the air keeps moving so even if a strong gust of wind from the west comes and blows away and the particle size or the particle presence reduces over delhi it might be over kanpur it might be over banaras it might be over calcutta because it is going there so we have to ensure clean air for the not only our country india but we have to ensure clean climate clean air clean water for the world it is the only planet as we know of there might be others which we don't know but climate change is affecting the whole planet today's discussion included climate change along with pollution and climate change is a very very serious matter we might be staring at the face of mass asphyxia i think mr mishra ji honorable member here was talking about the deaths of many many people in london in 1952 in india in delhi we might be staring in the face of mass asphyxia because the particulate matter because of the sulfur dioxide because of the nitrous oxide present because of the lead present the ozone present the carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas being a doctor i know if somebody forgets to put off a generator or uh, you know they are like lighting the chulas to keep themselves warm due to incomplete combustion carbon monoxide is produced and not carbon dioxide and that replaces reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the rbc within the body 
and the person will silently die in his sleep due to carbon monoxide poisoning. So are we staring into a face like that in our country, in Delhi? Shouldn't we all sit up? Instead of politicizing this issue, shouldn't we leave politics also out of this? And shouldn't we for once think about human good, whether it is our posterity, whether it is today's society, whether it is the elderly people? Shouldn't we be th thinking about the climate first? Because we are really facing this danger and every individual has a right to breathe clean air. So let us strive towards this. The climate change is real. Though there are many, many premiers, I don't want to name them here, of large nations who feel climate change is unreal. I don't want to name them. 193, 193 countries got together. They signed the Kyoto Protocol. They sat nights together in Paris, working on the do's and don'ts to prevent such hazardous results from climate change, not to be thrown into the dustbin. Depending upon the success of the Millennium Development Goals, the Sustainable Development Goals were drawn up with 17 goals and 169 targets, out of which a very important one was the climate change. And this climate change depends a lot on literacy or illiteracy and poverty. Because if people are illiterate of what they are doing, how can you prevent them from doing things like they are doing stubble burning and the poisonous gas is coming towards us from the West? Many poor people, they burn cow dung cakes. In our state, we call it ghutia. They are used for cooking. Cow dung cakes pollute the air. But that same cow dung, if we convert to the gas, gober gas, it is not polluting. So poverty is also linked to it. And poverty alleviation, if done properly, it will take care of the climate change also. We have to be talking about water pollution, about air pollution, about the food that we are eating, the pesticides being used, the fertilizers being used. They are causing cancer. The incidence of cancer has risen. The incidence of heart attack has risen. The incidence of lung diseases has risen because of this uncontrolled use of chemicals. The government really has to sit up and do something about that. And what is the air pollution we have to know? 41% of the air pollution is vehicular due to the automobile emission. As Madam was speaking there that the automobile industry doesn't like it well, if they don't like it, it is their problem, it is not the problem of the people who have a right to breathe clean air. 21% is the wind-blown dust. This dust, it includes mud, dried mud, it includes asbestos, it includes silicon. These little particles, when they are less than 2.5 microns, they can easily go into our respiratory system and cause inflammatory reactions in our breathing apparatus and give emphysematous change in the lungs, which means the lungs are inefficient. They cannot take in oxygen. Even if you are breathing, the oxygen will not go into the blood. It will not supply the brain or the important structures like heart and kidney. Emphysema till today has no cure unless we are replacing the lungs. We are transplanting the lungs, which is not so common, very expensive. So emphysema is change in the lungs going on in each of us. Not a matter by which we can just say, tutu mai mai. Let us keep politics out of it. Let us not uh, sit here and say that that MP was out there, his minister has done this, his chief minister has done this. Let us all work together towards giving our children, our country, our people, clean air, clean water, clean air, I mean, clean atmosphere, and stop or at least try to mitigate the effects of the climate change. 18% is contributed by industry. Why can't we have a check on the industry? What kind of pollution they are causing? Why can't the construction 
be done under cover. When buildings are being made, they should be covered. Otherwise, this cement is coming into the air and we are breathing it. Unknowingly, we are smoking cigarettes like Madam was saying over there. In answer to an unstarched question in Lok Sabha on 28th June 2019, Honorable Environment Minister, he was sitting there just now, has stated that the central government has notified a comprehensive action plan in 2018 for prevention, control and mitigation of air pollution. Now what I want to know from Honorable Minister is what about the assurance, sir? He is not there. I don't know who will answer for him. Only notification will not help. We will have to monitor what is actually happening on the ground level. Monitoring and the implementation is imperative. As I said, that even after, even after that, even after that, power production is also giving rise to pollution. Because even today, most of the electric power is produced by fossil fuel. And that is causing pollution. So what about the commitment of moving towards renewable energy? 40% of the produ produced renewable energy it should be producing electricity. I don't know what the government is thinking about that. In 2016, government of India had come out with a draft national wind solar hybrid policy with the aim of facilitating the functioning of 10,000 megawatts of hybrid wind solar plants by 2022. What is the status of that? We don't know. In 2016, again, government of India had decided to install 175 gigawatt solar power capacity building by 2020. What about this? that status? Are we serious when we are thinking of climate change? See, I have been fortunate to attend few climate parliaments and also the meetings of the international renewable energy agencies. And these things have been discussed. But when I seek permission and NOC to attend such a conference to be held in Abu Dhabi, I don't get an NOC from the government. I come and enrich my country. But we are not giving NOCs. Air quality is judged by the presence of emissions of hazardous amounts. It may be sulfur oxide, like I said, ozone, lead, and the annual concentration of sulfur dioxide in industrial residential areas should not be more than 50. We have it more than 100 here. Nitric oxide should not be more than 40. The particulate matter of size 10 microgram, microns per cubic meter should be less than 60. Particulate matter of 2.5 micron size should be less than 40. And the hazardous quality that we have here is in emergency benchmarks we are causing, having these in the level of 300 micro or 500 microgram per cubic meter. Lead poisoning, it develops after the air polluted with lead is inhaled and people might die. Carbon monoxide poisoning, the people might die. And as the gentleman there, I have mistaken his name, our honorable member, he was saying that all pollution in the country is all settled in Delhi. No. I have the report of the honorable minister here which says that particles of 10, you know, they are present in Bihar, they are present in 212 two, per cubic meter. In Chandigarh, 105. In Delhi, 278. It, we have it in Rachi, it is like 196. In Mumbai, it is 119. In Pune, it is 107. In Amritsar, I don't want to read it, it is very long, but they have the list. So the government should take up very seriously this matter. But the efforts of the Honorable Prime Minister is definitely laudable when they have eight national missions. Out of the eight national missions, sadly, I find the National Solar Mission, the National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, National Mission on Sustainable Habitat, the National Water Mission, the National Mission for Sustaining Himalayan Ecosystem, National Mission for Green India, National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture, National Mission for Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change. It is definitely laudable. I am sure we are moving forward. But let us all work together towards it so that we can give a clean environment to our future. Not Delhi, not Calcutta, not the country. I'm talking about the world, our planet. Let us all together save our planet. Thank you, sir.